We've not been to Devon for years, but this time we'll be staying in the small village of Holm, right on the edge of Dartmoor. Holm's a great base to explore Dartmoor, and it's not far from the South Devon coast too. Dartmoor is the remains of a huge volcano that erupted millions of years ago, with the lava forming the granite rocks. We check into our self-catering accommodation, the Walker's Retreat, with its fab gardens and views down to the valley below. And there's our pub, that's where we'll be eating later. After a few snaps of my better half, we do a circular exploratory walk of the village. Past its 11th century church and an ancient yew tree. There's always a squeaky gate. Sadly, the village pub is closed, but there's one in the village of Scorrington, yeah. where we'll head off to later. The community village tea room is where they serve freshly baked scones for the famous Devon cream teas. We make sure we're back in time to sample these most afternoons. Oh yes. The Walker's Retreat helps support this foundation in Nepal. So, without having to drive tonight, our nearest pub is a 20 minute walk down through Devon's archetypal narrow country lanes. Crossing a brook and passing through a small hamlet. Then up into Scorrington and the Tradesman's Arms pub for a pint and some good old pub grub. The following day we're off to visit Wisman's ancient oak woodland. We park opposite the Two Bridges Hotel and it's a roughly five mile round trip onto the moor. Hello guys, girls. Wisman's wood soon becomes visible as a huge swathe of dark green sloping into the valley below. Legend has it that Druids frequented this somewhat spooky woodland with its moss and lichen covered granite rocks and twisted trees. For photography, winter would be best for atmosphere, especially with some mist thrown in too. But on a summer day, with the twisted trees in leaf, not quite so eerie as it could be. Looks like a location for Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. Hello girls. One of you might be a guy, I don't know. <laughs> then it's back to Holm for another cream tea. Yum! This morning we briefly stop at Newbridge by the River Dart on our way to Widdicombe in the Moor. Widdicombe in the Moor is famous for its annual fair and the song Uncle Tom Cobbley and All. God, I remember that from my youth. That was a long time ago. Shortly after arriving, it's time for another cream tea. No, not my style, sadly.
Widdicombe's community centre dates from the 16th century. We have a brief walk around the church and graveyard. Some of these tombstones go back a few centuries and noticeably with the same family and ancestral names. Our next destination is Hound Tor. Passing several horses en route, they incidentally are owned by farmers too. This is Hound Tor. Apparently, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle got an inspiration here for the Hounds of the Baskervilles. What else? Well, so they say. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Not bad. Haha, <laughs> Karen's not scared, but imagine being up here on a dark, misty winter's day. <laughs> you think I should have driven up here, yeah? <laughs> Karen sat nav just went off and told us in the next few hundred yards we need to take a right. This tour is just one of over 160 granite hilltops on Dartmoor that have eroded over millennia, leaving these rocky outcrops. Some say they were stacked and placed by giants or fairies. Yep, that must be true. There's a lot here to see in this area, such as Becky Falls, and not too far away, an abandoned medieval settlement. Wish we'd known, could have walked to it. Oh well, so much for planning. There's a nice walk around Venford Reservoir, but it's boggy in places and strewn with tree roots. that trip you up. Are you getting to the root of the problem, babe? <laughs> yeah, as I trip and break my neck. Whoa. Yep, the boulders don't get you, the roots will. As a photographer, I love these moss-covered, gnarly trees. It's a pleasant one-mile walk around the reservoir. However, lack of research meant missing out on the more dramatic hike up to Bench Tor, with views down to the dark gorge. Oops. Oh well, another cream tea awaits, and later, dinner at our regular haunt. This stone dates from 1600 and was used to crush tin ore. Next day we visit Coombstone Tor, not far from Holne and probably the easiest to visit in Dartmoor as the road passes within a few metres at the top of the hill. Sparse windswept hawthorn trees demonstrate which way the wind mostly blows. Yep, from the west. Next we head down to Hexworthy and just have to get a shot of this sign. Brilliant. We're on the lookout for stepping stones across the dart. And we, I, cannot leave Dartmoor without crossing and filming one. On the way back from the garden room, magnificent gardens to visit by the way, we stop at Sharpator as I dash up for a few shots. And that's Borough Tor Reservoir in the distance. Princetown Prison, built in 1809 to lock up French prisoners, it's still in use today, over 200 years later, as I pop in to pick up my jailbird. Sacre bleu! Postbridge is one of the best complete clapper bridges in Dartmoor, 
although there are over 200 of these bridges crossing rivers and streams, and they're not exclusive to Dartmoor. Built with one or more granite slabs, resting on four piers, they must have taken a huge effort to construct, way back in medieval times. Dartmeet is where the West and East Dart rivers meet. Unsurprisingly, Dartmoor gets its name from the River Dart. The road bridge was built in 1792. And near here we have lunch, and chicken comes to mind, before heading off on our quest to find the elusive stepping stones. Just down from the road bridge is a collapsed clapper bridge, or slapper bridge as I like to call it. Passing a foal and mare, we follow the East Dart, and after a mile or so, we head back. A tad more map reading and research needed to find some stepping stones. Yeah. <laughs> On the narrow Dartmoor roads, there are always sheep, horses and cows around, so progress can be quite slow at times. Eventually we take a wrong turning and get lost. This isn't the right one, it can't be, can it? No. <laughs> Sat navs let us down again. As many of these lanes have absolutely no signage. Sat nav doesn't really work in Dartmoor, that's for sure. Uh, it's a bit silly to blame Sat nav, I guess, as a good detailed map is a far better idea here. Hiya. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are we going the right way? We're trying to get to Poundsworth. Pounds Is it Poundsworth? Pounds no, not Pondsworthy. We've come the from there. Gate. The first one, Pondsgate, I think. It's a cow. <laughs> Heading home, we stop off at Coombstone Tor again. This time, there's cattle, sheep and horses around, so I'll grab a few pictures. On our way to Haytor, we pull up seeing what appears to be ancient stone dwellings, all the remains of, certainly not Neolithic. Dartmoor has several Neolithic stone circles, which we managed to miss. Really, we're just skimming the surface of Dartmoor. Rather than five days on the moor, I could do with a month at least, to really explore it and do so much more hiking. Haytor on the southeastern edge of Dartmoor is one of the largest chunks of rock with an elevation of 475 metres. And from up here we have a distant view of the Devon coast. We drive on and park at the visitor centre with its much more impressive view of Haytor rocks as we hike up.
Granite railway tracks from 1820 built to convey granite with horse-drawn wagons. The original London Bridge was constructed by granite from here. After much map studying, we think we've discovered the location of an impressive set of stepping stones near Hexworthy, following a stream called Oberuk all the way down as it flows into the West Dart River. It's near there that we should find them. These are not the stepping stones we're after. <laughs> yes, you were waiting for me to fall in, weren't you? There they are. Whoa. At last, at last, these stepping stones are huge and quite spaced apart. Oh, blimey. Reaching halfway, I turn around to take off my backpack full of camera gear, just in case, as the river is deep and fast flowing in the middle. So, just with the GoPro, I cross to the other side. Back in Holne, and before heading off for dinner, I take a local walk, which takes me down to the Dark River Gorge. After a very sunny week, it looks like rain's on its way. And it is. By the time I get home, I'm soaked through. But overall, we've had a fab time. Love Dartmoor. <laughs> <laughs>